In this video, we're going to continue looking at 2.2. So the first thing I want to do is just do some more examples using the quotient rule. So to start off, let's look at example A. So we want to find the derivative of this. So if you notice, we actually have two quotients. We have this quotient right here, and we have this quotient over here. Now, we can't simplify these any further, so it's not going to be possible for us to simplify and then use the pro the um, power rule. So we're going to actually have to use the quotient rule for both of these. So for the first one here, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to call the top u and the bottom v. So u equals 1 minus 3x and v equals x squared plus 2. And then take the derivative of each. So this is going to be negative 3. Derivative of the bottom will be 2x. And then when we multiply, remember we multiply across the bottom, bottom to top. So the start of the derivative will be negative 3 times x squared plus 2 minus the product of the other two. So 2x times 1 minus 3x. And then that's all going to be over the denominator squared. So x squared plus 2 all squared. So that's the first part. Now we're going to look at the derivative of the second part, and there's going to be a minus between them because the original fractions are being subtracted. So now I'm going to look at this. u is going to equal 1. And v will be the denominator, which is 2x plus 5. So take the derivative. Derivative of 1 is going to be 0 derivative of the 2x plus 5 is just going to be 2. Multiply from bottom to top, so we have 0 times 2x plus 5, which is really just going to be 0. And then minus 2 times 1, so minus 2. On the bottom, the original denominator squared. So the only thing I'm going to do to simplify this is just this top here. Instead of having it minus 0, minus 2, I'm going to just make it plus 2 because it's going to really be minus negative 2. So let me just rewrite that, and then we'll just leave everything else as is instead of trying to simplify it. And we have to keep them as two separate fractions because they don't have the same denominator. So up top here, it's going to be a minus negative 2, which really means plus 2 over 2x plus 5 all squared. So there is our derivative. So for b, you guys can try that one on your own. You're just going to have to do the quotient rule on this part, but then just make sure that you remember to take the derivative of this minus 3x to the third and include that at the end of the quotient rule, or what you get out from the quotient rule. So let's, and then c, I think you guys should do on your own as well. So let's look at d together, because that one has some radicals involved. So First thing I want to do for this one is rewrite it. So this is going to be t to the one-third plus 4. And then it's going to be t to the one-half, since it's a square root, minus 5. So then after that, now I can identify the u is going to be up top. So t to the one-third plus 4. v will be on the bottom, t to the one-half, minus 5. And then we're going to take the derivative of each piece. So this is going to become one-third t. And then one-third minus 1 is really like saying one-third minus 3 over 3. So it's going to be negative 2 over 3. And then the plus 4 just goes to 0. Derivative, derivative of v is going to be one-half t. And then one-half minus 1 would be negative one-half. And then the minus 5 just goes to 0. So now we're going to multiply these. So the derivative, so v prime of t, is going to be 1 third t to the negative 2 thirds times t to the 1 half minus 5 minus the product of these other two. So 1 half t to the negative 1 half times t to the 1 third plus 4 all over e to the 1 half minus 5 
quantity squared. So there is our final answer. So let's do F together. So E, try on your own. Um, so for F, I want to do this one together because if you notice, it kind of has a combination of product rule and quotient rule because I have a product and one of the pieces of the product is a quotient. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and set this up like product rule because overall I'm actually multiplying this times this. So this is going to be U, this will be V. And what will happen when I go to find the derivative of B, I'll have to do the quotient rule because it's a quotient within the product. So to start it off, U will be X squared plus X and V will be X to the third minus 2X all over 5X plus 4. Take the derivative of U, so we get 2X plus 1. Take the derivative of B, and this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult because it's not as straightforward, so you're going to have to do the quotient rule. So this will be the U, and this will be the V. If you want to call them different letters, you can so it doesn't get confusing. I'm just going to use a different color so that it's not confusing. So we have 5x plus 4. So u prime will be 3x squared minus 2, and v prime will just be a 5. So it's quotient rule, so we're going to be subtracting when we cross multiply. So basically, I'm just going to re rewrite that up here. So it's going to be 5x plus 4 times 3x squared minus 2 minus 5 times x to the third minus 2x all over the entire denominator squared. So there's the derivative of this quotient. So now I have to go back and actually finish this, which is using the product rule. So f prime of x is going to be these two things being multiplied to start. So we have x to the third minus 2x over 5x plus 4 times 2x plus 1. And then product rule, again, means addition between the two pieces. So then it's going to be x squared plus x times this whole quotient rule result. So 5x plus 4 times 3x squared minus 2 minus 5 times x to the third minus 2x and that's all over 5x plus 4 squared. So that is going to be my final answer. We're not going to even attempt to simplify that. We're just going to leave it as is. So let's go ahead and look at the next page for some other types of examples that we could come across. Um, so make sure you guys try these other ones for extra practice. This one's pretty straightforward. You're just going to have to rewrite these with negative exponents. And then these other two, you're going to have to do the quotient rule, which will be pretty straightforward on those. But you have to remember to just to subtract off the derivative of these pieces at the end. Since the pieces at the end are already in the power rule format, you're just going to use the power rule to find the derivative. So on the next page, um, there's some extra examples that I do want you to try on your own. So for this first one, you're just doing the derivative up to you if you want to distribute that t through and just use power rule or if you want to use the product rule between these two parts. And then just again, make sure you take the derivative of the 567. Once you find the derivative, then you're going to take and you're going to plug 45 into the derivative since it says p prime of 45. Um, for example, two, same thing. I want you guys to try it. I just want to point out one thing to you. When um, In this problem, it's talking about the average cost, average revenue, and it's asking for the average profit. So anytime it's asking for the average cost, revenue, or profit, it means you take those costs, revenue, and profit functions, and you're dividing them by x. So if you notice they have x's on the bottom, same thing will happen for the average profit. 
Um, so when you go to do that, you would actually be using your same idea of taking the revenue minus the cost, but instead of doing the revenue minus the cost, it's going to be the average revenue minus the average cost. So this setup for this would look something like this. So the average revenue minus the average cost function. And then you would go ahead and figure that out just to get the function. And then it says find the rate. So that just means take the derivative of the result from part A. And then the last part is just to plug in three. We will try one of those um, together in a couple pages we'll try it um, just so that basically we'll do one that's a little bit harder. This one's a little bit easier so I want you to try that one on your own. So let's go to the next page and let's do this one together. So this one's asking for the final or find the equation of a line tangent to this function at x equals 4. So you've seen plenty of these problems and if you remember anytime it's asking you to find the equation of a line that's tangent there's always th three steps. You have to find the point that the line's tangent at you also have to find the slope of the tangent line, and then you're going to use the point and the slope into the point-slope form of a line and get the equation. So one thing to find the point, you're going to just use what they give you for the x value, and you have to figure out the corresponding y value. So let's start with that. So if x equals 4, we want to find the y value. So we're starting with the point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug 4 into this function. Anywhere I see an x, I'm plugging in a 4. And then we're just going to go ahead and simplify that. So this would become 2 plus 3, and then 2 plus 8. So this would be 5 times 10, so we get 50. So that means the point that our tangent line is passing through is going to be 4 comma 50. So that's the first step. The second step is going to be to find the slope of the tangent. And in order to know the slope of the tangent, you're going to have to take the derivative because that tells you the instantaneous rate of change. So the rate of change at a specific point. So the slope of the tangent, we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this function because I have an x in the denominator and I have a radical. So I want to rewrite everything so that it's in that format ready for power rule. So I'm going to have 8 times x to the negative 1 plus 3. And then it's going to be x to the 1 half plus 2x. So that's just the rewrite. Now what I need to do is I need to find the derivative. Because slope of tangent means we need to know the derivative. So in order to find the derivative, you could multiply this through, which is going to be probably more complicated because you have a negative exponent and a fractional exponent. So what I would recommend doing is using your product rule because I have a function times another function. So I'm going to let this one be u and this one be v. So u is going to equal 8 times x to the negative 1 plus 3. And v is going to equal x to the 1 half plus 2x u prime then will be negative 8x to the negative 2 when we subtract 1 to multiply the exponent by the coefficient. v prime will be 1 half x, subtract 1 from 1 half, so we get negative 1 half plus 2. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply these, and since it's the product rule, you add them. So you cross multiply and then add. So negative 8x to the negative 2 times x to the 1 half plus 2x plus 8x to the negative 1 plus 3 times 1 half x to the negative 1 over 2 plus 2. So there is our derivative. That's the equation that will get us the slope. But in order to actually figure out the slope, you have to plug in x equals 4. Because we want to know the slope when x equals 4 at that specific point. 
So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in 4. And this is one where I would just use my calculator to actually plug in. You can do this in your head, but in order to do it in your head, you kind of have to rewrite this. So basically put all of the negative exponents at the bottom, fractions make them roots again, so it's easier to understand what you're doing. But your calculator should have no problem with just putting in negative exponents and fractional exponents. So that's fine to do it that way. So I'm just going to plug in. And when you plug into your calculator, I would do a couple pieces at a time here. I wouldn't try to enter this entire thing in because it will just become complicated. Um, so I'm going to leave that up to you. But once you put that into your calculator, you should get 25 over 4. So that tells me that the slope at this point is 25 over 4. So now my last step, now that I know the slope and I know the point, I'm going to find the equation of my tangent line. So that's going to be using this point-slope form. So your point is going to be 4, 50 from up top there. And my slope is 25 over 4. So I'm going to plug those things in. So this is going to be my x1, y1. So it's going to be y minus 50 equals 25 over 4 times x minus 4. Go ahead and distribute that. So we get y minus 50 equals 25 over 4x. And then when you distribute this, you're going to end up with minus 25 because those 4s will divide out. So then add 50 to both sides. So y equals 25 over 4x plus 25. So there's your final answer. There's your equation of your tangent line at the point x equals 4. So let's look at another example that uses those tangent lines. So really, they're just coming back in this section because now, in order to find the derivative, we might have to use the product rule or the quotient rule. Otherwise, it's the same process. It's just finding the derivatives are not as easy as they were in section 2.1. So the next page, we're going to find the equation of the tangent line to the function f of x equals x squared over x minus 1 at the points where the tangent line is horizontal. So if it's saying that the tangent line is horizontal, that tells me that the slope has to be 0 which really means that the derivative is equal to 0. And for this one, so we want to know what is the equation of the tangent line. We want to find the equation of the tangent line, but they're not telling us what x value it's at. Instead, they're telling us at the points, point or points, where the tangent line is horizontal. So basically, I have to figure out the x value where the tangent line is horizontal. Or x, it could be one or two x values where the tangent line is horizontal. And then from there, I'm going to do basically the process that we just did. Find the point, find the slope, and then plug it in. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this derivative, or I'm going to take this function, find the derivative, and then set that equal to 0. Because that's the first thing. I have to figure out what x values is this tangent line horizontal at. So my first step then is going to be to set the derivative equal to 0. So first thing you got to do to do that is to find the derivative. So if I have my function f of x equals x squared over x minus 1, we can't reduce that and use power rule. So in this case, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So I'm going to have u equaling x squared, v equaling x minus 1. So u prime will be 2x, and v prime will just be a 1. So then multiply these, and we're going to subtract here. So f prime of x is going to equal 2x times x minus 1 minus x squared, 1 times x squared, all over the original denominator squared. Since I'm going to be setting this equal to 0, I'm going to go ahead and just simplify it a little bit. So when you simplify this, distribute. So we get 2x squared minus 2x minus x squared. And then the bottom, I'm just going to leave it as is. 
So what ends up happening is you get x squared minus 2x all over x minus 1 squared. So there's our derivative. So now what I need to do is I need to set that derivative equal to 0. And I need to solve for x because I need to know when is the slope equal to 0. So whenever you have a rational function equal to 0, you can basically just think of it as setting the top equal to 0 because any number, 0 divided by any number is always 0. So basically I could think of this as having a 1 in the denominator, cross multiply, and you would get that x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. So I'm just basically going to set the top equal to 0. And go ahead and solve that. So factor x minus 2 equals 0. So we get x equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 2 and x equals 0. So those are the two x values where the tangent line is horizontal. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the points. Because we want to know, well, what points are these? So we have x equals 0 and we have x equals 2. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug those into our original function because we want to know what points on the original function. So we have 0 over negative 1. So this is just going to give me 0. So one of the points is going to be 0 comma 0. The other point, so plug in 2 into the original. So I get 4 over 1, so I get 4, so 2 comma 4. So this is another point where the tangent line is horizontal. So now what I need to do is I want to find the equation. It's not just asking for the points where the tangent lines are horizontal, it's asking for the equation of those tangent lines. So if you remember, to find the equation, you got to know two things, your slope and your point. Well, I already know that my slope, I kind of skipped that second step because you know how normally we do, we find the point, then we find the slope, and then we plug into the equation. I already know that my slope is zero for these because the lines are horizontal. since it told me that the lines had to be horizontal, that means the slope has to be zero. So without that information, I wouldn't have been able to find these points. So that's why they, instead of giving me the point, they gave me that the slope is horizontal. So now that I know the points, now I can plug in. So I'm going to have one of the equations using this point. So this is my x1, y1. So it's going to be y minus zero equals zero for the slope. times x minus 0. So when you go to simplify this, you get y equals 0. So there's one equation. And then the other equation is going to be y minus, so again, x1, y1, y minus 4 equals 0 times x minus 2. So you end up with y minus 4 equals 0, because all that would just become 0 bring over the 4, you get y equals 4. So your two equations would be y equals 0 and y equals 4, and that makes sense if it's just y equals a number because it's supposed to be the basically horizontal tangent line. So these two lines are tangent, but they're also horizontal. So that's just kind of something that we've already seen, but just going another step further with it. And then the next example is going back and talking about that average um, cost, average revenue, average profit. So first, let's read through the problem. So Sparkle Pottery has determined that the cost in dollars of producing X spaces is given by this function. If the revenue from the sale of X spaces is R of X, find the rate at which the average profit, so I'm going to box that as something important, the average profit per base is changing when 50 bases have been made and sold. So first thing is I know that X stands for the number of bases. We want to know what's the average profit. What's find the rate 
at which the average profit is changing when you have X equaling 50. So essentially what that's saying is find the derivative because it wants you to find the rate at which the average profit, so I'm looking at A sub P here, the little subscript P, and I want to find the derivative, but then what I want to do is I want to plug in 50. So this is really our end goal is to get this. Find the average or the rate of the average profit when X equals 50. So let's go ahead and figure out how are we gonna do this. So in order to be able to get to the average profit function, I have to first know the average cost and the average revenue. Because if you remember, the average profit function is the same thing as saying the average revenue function minus the average cost function. So in order to get these average functions, so average cost, that's actually the same thing as saying C of X divided by X. It really just means you're going to be dividing. So in terms of this problem, the average cost function would be what they gave us up here. So 4,300 plus 2.1 X to the 0.6 divided by X. The divided by X comes from this average cost. And then the average revenue would be the same thing, but with the revenue function. So you take the revenue function and divide it by X. So in terms of the problem, the average revenue function, so this X shouldn't be a subscript. The R is a subscript, but the X isn't. The X is the input. So it's 65X to the 0.9 divided by X. So then over here, I'm going to take these two things and I'm going to plug them in. Because i got to first find the average profit function so that I can take the derivative of it and then once I know the derivative I can then plug in the 50. So average revenue is going to be 65 X to the 0.9 over X minus 4300 plus 2.1 X to the 0.6 all over X, and I'm going to put that in parentheses because I have to remember to distribute this negative through. So what happens when you subtract fractions? You can only combine them if they have the same denominator. So I'm going to keep the denominator, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to combine the top. So it's going to be 65X to the 0.9 minus 4300 minus 2.1X to the 0.6. So that's the first part. Here's your average profit function. So now that I know that, I can actually take the derivative. So to take the derivative, we're going to have to use quotient rule because we have a quotient. So u is going to be the top. And v will be the bottom. Take the derivative of the top. So you're going to be doing 0.9 times 65, so we're going to get 58.5x, and then subtract 1 from that, so you're going to get negative 0.1. This 4300 will just go to 0, and then this will be 0.6 times 2.1, will be negative 1.26x to the negative 0.4, when you subtract 1 from that. And then V prime is easy, it's just going to be 1. So then again, remember, multiply from bottom to top first. So the derivative of the average profit will be X times 58.5 X to the negative 0.1 minus 1.26 X to the negative 0.4 times or minus the product of these two things. One times this whole thing really just be that whole thing. Notice that I'm putting parentheses because I would have to remember to distribute 
that negative. So I either put parentheses or I just actually go through and distribute that negative. And then this is all going to be over the denominator squared, the original denominator squared. So here is your derivative. And now the last step is to find the rate at which the average profit per base is changing when 50 bases have been made and sold. So now we have to actually plug in 50 for x into the derivative because it's wanting to find the average rate or the rate of the average profit. So when you plug in 50, this is definitely one that you would want to have a calculator for. And I would just use the negative exponents when you plug in. So I plug in 50, use parentheses, make sure you plug into your calculator a little bit at a time. I wouldn't try to put this whole thing into your calculator in one step. It's easier to make mistakes that way. And make sure you keep these, I would do the parentheses first and then whatever you get, just subtract it. And this is all over 50 squared. So I'm going to leave that up to you to put that into your calculator, but you should end up with 1.64. And then the last thing is to interpret what this means. So if you think about rate of change, it's always the y values over the x values. So the y values in this case stand for money, dollars. So the y is going to be dollars. So $1.64 per x values. Well, the x value or the x stands for bases. So it's going to be $1.64 per base is going to be the final answer to this. So $1.64 per base is the rate at which the average profit is changing when we have 50 bases. So then the last page for this section is just more examples where we have to basically combine the product and the quotient rule. So you might have um, a quotient within a product. So when you look at this, this first example, you see three things being multiplied. So this is up to you how you want to go about it, if you want to distribute or if you want to multiply this stuff first. But basically what you want to know with this is overall it's a product. So you could decide that I'm going to call this whole thing U and then this whole thing B. And then when you go to take the derivative of U, you're going to have to do the product rule again. Otherwise, you have to distribute this square root of Y so that you can apply the power rule when you go to take the derivative of U. So overall, the format of this is going to be a product, so you're going to be using the product rule but there's a product within, a product rule within the product rule. So I'm going to leave that up to you, and then I just want to kind of briefly talk about these others, but I'm going to leave them up to you to do as well. So the big picture for this one is going to be a quotient because it's dividing the whole top divided by the bottom. So you're going to end up using the quotient rule for this, but when you get to do the quotient rule and you have to call this u, and you have to take the derivative of u, Hopefully you notice that that's going to require the product rule. Otherwise, you're going to have to multiply those out and then use the power rule. So it's up to you, but essentially this is a product rule within a quotient. And then the last one here, you have a product, u times v. So overall, it's going to be a product, but once you go to take the derivative or find the derivative of u, you're going to notice that you have a quotient. So you're going to have a quotient inside of a product. So we saw one like this before. It's basically the same process. You're going to use those different rules, but when you go to find the derivative of u or v in some of these, you're going to have to apply the product or quotient rule again. So try those on your own, and then we'll look at the answers in class.